Howdy folks, George Shively with you here on another project that we're starting to work on. This is a 2004 uh, Sea Ray 480 motor yacht and uh, we're going to do some modernization here to the boat, bring it up to speed. The uh, owners are planning to do the great loop on the boat and uh, need to get some updated gear on here. What we've got now is the um, most modern piece of equipment, it's a Raymarine hybrid touch there in the center. That'll be going away, as will the uh, rudder angle indicator. Um, that's kind of already a duplicate of what's down here on the pilot. Um, the clarion remote control will be going away because we're going to re be replacing the stereo behind uh, the helm here with a Fusion. So you'll be able to control that from the Garmin screens. Um, the RL80C, uh, primarily your radar screen, um, that'll be going away. Um, we'll be maintaining the uh, speaker for the VHF, although we'll be replacing this VHF with an ICOM, um, M400 black box ICOM, and we'll of course keep the, uh, the autopilot. So I have new panels coming for that, so it'll look like it just came off the line, but I wanted to kind of show you what we're starting with here. We're also replacing the satellite TV system on the boat as well. So this is what we're starting with. Stay with us. Thanks for watching. Howdy folks, back with you here on the 480. As you can see, we've got the uh, the helm opened up, all the old gear out. We're in the process of doing some uh, work inside the helm. You'll see this right here. This is our handiwork where everything gets labeled um, because otherwise you don't know. And if bad things happen and you, know, you have to get this serviced at a distance, you want whoever is working on it um, to be able to know what they're doing and not open it up and go, oh my God. Um, because then that just ends up costing the customer more money, so you don't want that. So right here um, uh, is our NEMA 183 interface. We're still using that uh, because that feeds the vessel view system up here. And it's also going to feed the pilot, which is um, right there. Um, that is not a NEMA 2000 device. So uh, we've got that. We're in the process of getting that connected. Um, NEMA 2000 plug from the new aft stereo that's going in again it's labeled so we know what the heck it is fusion stereo aft um where the old rl80c was located uh working on that we've got new panels coming uh, venerable assistant pete is working on the stereo here in the aft um, to uh, replace that had to pull out the uh, uh, ice maker refrigerator to do that uh, and if you look at the upper ceiling panel here, you'll see all of those are down because you need that to access the wiring upstairs and be very careful or else you'll crush the roof when you walk on it. So um, that's about it for now. Stay tuned. <clears throat> Howdy folks, George Shively back with you in the shop here. I um, wanted to show you one of the things we're doing here. Um, the downstairs stereo in the um, salon um, had a um, standard kind of stereo cutout here. Uh, it was for a Panasonic stereo, your standard kind of cutout. You can tell by the holes that are here that most likely there used to be a Clarion stereo here. And what they had done previously was they replaced the stereo and then just put four screws in the holes, which I guess if you're in a bind, that's okay to do. But the way we're going to do this is obviously we're taking off the old laminate. We have a bunch of laminate that we use regularly on boats, comes in four by eight sheets. And then what we're going to do is we're going to re-laminate this piece and um, then cut out the new proper hole for the fusion stereo that's going to go on here. Um, certainly a lot more work, um, but it ends up with um, a finish that just looks like it's always been this way. A lot of times what people will do is they'll just get a piece of starboard. And sometimes that's really all you really can do, um, short of totally reinventing the wheel. But in a situation like this, to really do this right, you uh, fill the hole, which we've done, and um, then you go ahead and relaminate it with the laminate there, and then you um, cut the new hole in it. And again, it ends up with just a, you know, you can't tell what you've done, which is ideally what we want to have the result be. This hole right here used to be a little USB um, connector for the stereo. The, the stereo had an older 
type of stereo in it, so you needed an external USB. New stereo, of course, has Bluetooth. So just want to show you some of the work here that goes into just a little nothing, but uh, God is in the details, so stay tuned. Folks, we are back. Um, just kind of wanted to show you how the new stereo turned out here. Um, this was not a five minute job. Um, this took a fair amount of, of work, as well as materials, just in the, the laminate itself. That's not something that you can go in and uh, buy for $6 at uh, West Marine and have in your hand. Um, so, you know, it's one thing to, you know, be able to change out a stereo. Um, most could probably do that. To be able to do this and make it look like no one else was ever in there and this had always been there is a little different. So hopefully you'll keep that in mind and uh, when you need electronics done on your boat. Stay tuned. Hi folks, back with you here on the 480. We are down in the uh, salon area. As you can see, this is the uh, panel that uh, we worked on before for the new stereo. We're doing the wiring on that, kind of cleaning that up, um, label, labeling a lot of things too, so you just know what's here. Um, seats for the um, settee here in the salon had to come out in order for wire egress. The uh, area underneath the TV had to be completely removed. That was just, there was so much stuff in there that it, it just needed to be completely redone. So we're in the process of doing that. But just kind of show you here briefly what uh, what things look like um, in order to accomplish what we're doing. Uh, if we come up here to the helm, um, you can see inside a little dark. Sorry, I don't have my portable light there, but uh, uh, we've got the AIS unit installed. Um, let me get a light here. And uh, I think that'll help out the argument a little bit, but there we go. Um, we started to put in our uh, NEMA 2000 network, um, everything labeled so you know what it is. Um, again, there's the AIS. Move the stereo amp down a little bit to accommodate that. Um, got the uh, ICOM 400 black box up top. Um, and uh, as we alluded to before, our NEMA, two th uh, NEMA 183 network um, still there. Um, so we're making progress, making headway. We've got the, uh, the ceiling back up. Um, all the work on the hard top is complete. Um, so stay tuned. We're glad you're here. Howdy folks, George Shively back with you here on the 48 Sea Ray cockpit motor yacht. Came down into the uh, engine room. We're reusing the transducer on this because there's no reason not to, but kind of came down into the engine room, into the bilge, and I'm trying to get a picture of this here with, so as you can see, um, and located the transducer. And if you notice, that little arrow should be pay, uh, facing the keel. Well, um, you can tell which way the keel is, and it is not forward. Uh, the keel is this way. So I don't know how that thing ever worked properly because it's installed incorrectly. And the offset is way off because it's a 20 degree tilt offset, which is fine if it was installed correctly, but that arrow needs to be pointing that way, not towards the front of the boat. Uh, maybe someone didn't understand what the word keel meant, but these are the kind of things we run into when we correct and it, uh, we make sure that the installation is uh, solid from the get-go. Um, and that includes when we integrate existing equipment because there's no reason not to reuse this transducer. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Howdy folks. And this is what happens when you put a transducer in incorrectly. Um, you try to remove the nut to the best of your ability, which I've done. You take out the old transducer and you install a new one. It's a perfectly good B60, installed incorrectly, couldn't get it to cooperate, had to take it out. Important to put in a transducer correctly. Howdy folks, George Shively back with you here in the, uh, the hole on the 48 uh, cockpit motor yacht. As you can see now, there's a new transducer in place. Um, you'll see this little bit of extra wire here, still have to cut that wire tie. Hate when wire ties aren't cut. Uh, you always cut them to length. But anyway, um, you'll notice now that if you look carefully 
down there, you can see that the arrow is pointing towards the keel, which is the way it's supposed to be. Not pointing forward, but pointing towards the keel. The reason for the extra wire here is that's called a service loop. If you ever have to drop the transducer, um, for whatever reason, you have to replace the transducer, etc. You've got a little bit of extra wire to work with so that you can easily service it, hence a service loop. So that's what things are supposed to look like, save for the extra tail there on the wire tie, which will be cut momentarily. Um, so that's how that's supposed to look. Howdy folks, back with you here. I just want to show you something that's somewhat important. You'll see that we've got all the new gear loaded into the cabinet here that's going to go below the TV in the salon. The top unit there is the antenna control unit for the satellite TV and of course your first direct TV, rec TV receiver and your second. Um, also wanted to show you something here on the back side which is even more important. This right here is about as messy as wiring should ever get. Uh, we need to have a certain amount of wiring coming into the back here so that we can take this whole cabinet out, set it next to where it goes, and be able to work on it and then put it back. How many times I've been on a boat where you'll get the cabinet out about eh, maybe this far from being clear and the wires are so tight that you, you can't go any further and you're afraid to, to go any further because you don't want to disconnect something and then you don't know where it went and things don't work and you know it's wasn't like that before you were on the boat kind of situation so this is about as messy as it should ever be um also want to take a second here and show you something else inside where we were working this is where some of the hardware is located for the satellite tv system on the top up there is a power supply, and then we have modulators located here. But as you can see, I mean, everything is neat. Wiring is neat. There's, you know, nothing, no messes. Um, I decided to put this equipment in here because it's got great ventilation, um, and uh, it's easy to get to. Um, so if you need to, it's easy to get to. So I just wanted to take a second and show you that. And uh, again, how important it is to have Again, service loops or appropriate length of wire so that you can work on something. Stay tuned. Howdy folks, we're wrapping up here on the 480 motor yacht. Kind of wanted to show you how things turned out. Um, thing looks pretty good. Um, nice and cohesive. It's a you know full integrated nav system at this point. Um, helm's a little bit cleaner. You'll notice here on the main panel where there used to be a rudder angle indicator, that's gone and the stereo control that was on the starboard side, that's gone. That is now controlled via the Garmin, um, well, either Garmin, uh, because it's NEMA 2000, so I uh, didn't need that. Um, over here, we have an 8612, um, because we had the room for it. Maintained the Raymarine speaker, although modified it, took out the volume control. It is now tied into the ICOM that we installed, and of course the um, Raymarine Pilot. Uh, there was no reason to replace that and the reason why we got rid of the um, rudder angle indicator is there's one right here so um, didn't really need that it was kind of very much a duplicate um, and with the one display here and the other display you know foot and a half away it was really kind of redundant so integrated everything into the vessel view system which you see center screen um, added a little um, uh, USB outlet here, which also shows power. Um, there's a little tiny uh, LED display, which also shows your static voltage on your um, electronics bus, which is just, you know, happy to, happy to know. Um, and that's about it. We're still waiting on the radar antenna. Um, that's, uh, that's been slow, but uh, at least wanted to kind of show you how the helm turned out here. It looks pretty good. Panels came out beautiful as usual and uh, tried to make this look like uh, we were never here. So, as always, if you want to get in touch with us, South Shore Marine Electronics, we're at 216-407-6553. Or email Electronics at oh.rr.com or on the web. South Shore Marine Electronics .com. Thank you very much for watching.